Close your eyes and pull like that. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam Maguire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport Editor Kieran McCarthy. On this week's show we're focusing on speed and who better to talk to us about that than Ireland's fastest woman Phil Healy. The Ballinine Bullet has been in cracking form of late and she spoke to Kieran about her early season form and her ambitions for what is quite possibly the biggest year of her career. We're also going to reflect on what was a great weekend for Ross Garbury rugby player John Hodnett who made his Munster debut in the Pro 14 on Friday night and even managed to get himself amongst the tries in a 68-3 win over the Southern Kings at Musgrave Park. But we'll kick off this week with Ballinine sprinter Phil Healy who has been making headlines in recent weeks with her exploits on the track. Now, Kieran, in my intro, I refer to her as Ireland's fastest woman. And I did it on purpose because would it be fair to say she's not overly enthused with that title that the media have bestowed upon her? Well, it's actually not the media. It's, fact. it's a fact. It's, it's a, a fact. fact. Like she's Ireland's fastest ever woman, but she doesn't like that title. She doesn't like being introduced as Ireland's fastest ever woman. She said she gets a bit embarrassed about it. She kind of puts her heads down, or puts her head down, just wants to get to the to the starting blocks. But there's there's no disputing like she is Ireland's fastest woman. She now holds three Irish records. Uh, last week at the international meet at at Lone, she set a new Irish indoor two hundred two hundred meter record when she ran. 23.10, so she knocked off 0.07 seconds off the previous record, which was set by Kira Sheehy back in 2003. So um, it's amazing stuff by Phil Healy again. So she's now the 100 metre and 200 metre outdoor record holder, record holder and the 200 metre indoor record holder, which is incredible for the Bellanine Bullet, which we have called her countless times in the Southern Star. And I did check with her to say, kind of, is it okay to call you the Bellanine Bullet? And she likes that. So I think we'll have to trademark Bellinine Bullet for the Southern Star because come the Olympics, and fingers crossed that Phil gets there, I can see the national media latching on to the Bellinine Bullet, which we have used for years and years and years, Jack. Okay, well, so far in this week's show, we've referenced, referred to her as Ireland's fastest woman. That makes it five times. So will we make a, a, a deal that between now and the end of the season, between now and Tokyo 2020, will only refer to her as Phil Healy and the Ballinine Bullet. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Kind of, um, it makes her uncomfortable. It makes her embarrassed. She is one of the best sports stars to come out of West Cork in recent years. We probably shouldn't annoy her. No, and she's like, she's the queen of Irish sprinting. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, that could be her new name, the queen, queen of, of Irish, Irish sprinting. sprinting. <laughs> she's royalty when it comes to Irish <laughs> athletics. And she's only 25. And um, she is the national indoors coming up quite soon as well. And she's racing in a 200 and 400 there. Like you said earlier, Jack, it's going to be a huge year for Phil. She's on track to qualify for the Olympics. Um, yeah, but before we go and hear from Phil, you might just refresh my memory and our listeners' memory. A couple of weeks back, we had her coach, Shane McCormick, on the podcast talking about what she needs to do to get to book herself a ticket to Tokyo. She's obviously gone on and ran some huge races mm-hmm. since you had that com- uh, conversation with Shane. So where does she stand as of right now in terms of Olympic qualification? There are two ways that Phil Healy can qualify for the Tokyo Olympics. Um, she wants to run in the 200 metres in Tokyo, so she can either hit the qualifying standard, which is 22.8. Um, that's faster than her PB at the moment, which is 22.99, and which is also an Irish nas- national record. So if she hits 22.8, that will be another Irish record. Just to say to Phil is the only Irish woman ever to run under twenty under twenty three seconds for the two hundred meters. Um, she feels that that twenty two point eight is within her reach. If she didn't get injured last year, herself and her coach Shane McCormick felt that she could have hit twenty two point six, twenty two point seven. So before now and the summer, there is a good chance that Phil can hit the qualifying standard. If not, the other way of qualifying for the Tokyo Olympics is to inside the top 50, 56 ranking in the world 
currently I think she she's around 29th or 30th so she's safely in there if she finishes it in the top 56 by the end of June she's going to Tokyo different points are allotted to different races so the faster Phil runs and the more races she wins the more points she'll get for her ranking so she's currently kind of quite comfortable like I said around the 29 30 mark if she stays there she's going to Tokyo that way so at the moment Phil is right on track for for the Tokyo Olympics and it's actually shaping up to be a super summer sport for us, Jack, because between the rowers and Phil Healy and we may as well mention Christina Desmond at the moment, um, the Kilimanjaro boxer who is also hoping to get to the Summer Olympics. And she's currently she, in a pre-Olympic qualification training camp in Italy. She had some good speak. news last week. She was picked in the Irish squad for the... Uh, for the Olympic qualifier, which is in London uh, towards the end of this month, start of next month. And that team of 12, I think, are currently in Italy sparring as mm. prep for the olympic qualifiers so all going well she'll book her ticket to tokyo as well like i said could be a fantastic summer of sport and hopefully this is this won't be our last interview with phil healy this year i'm quite confident that phil will get to, to tokyo and like jack said earlier we caught up with phil to get our thoughts on setting another irish record and just why she doesn't like that title of ireland's fastest woman less than two weeks ago we had your coach Shane mccormick on the podcast and he said that you're going to break records this year, and here we are, less than two years or less than two weeks later, and you've already broken a national record um, this year. Um, first off, congratulations on that. And I just want to know, Phil, before a race like this, would you have an inkling that something special is in the offing? Um, so AIT Grand Prix was there on Wednesday last, so yeah, it's a massive meet. The um, organisers put on a 200 this year. It's usually a 400 for women, so. We had uh, requested to put on a 200 because of Olympic um, ranking points and um, we knew there was going to be a massive crowd and there was a, it was a good category race. So um, it was an ideal one for to target. So because World Indoors is cancelled due to the coronavirus, we treated this as our major champ. So this was the main aim for us. So we were going to make the most out of this race. There's, you won't get as packed a stadium in Ireland ever or an atmosphere like it. So it's just about soaking it all up enjoying the moment and if the time came the time came but definitely based on the performance two weeks prior to that when I ran 23 28 in that loan as well um I knew there was a quick time in me and if I knew I got into the right race the right atmosphere that that record could go it seems all the elements kind of came together for you in that loan last week and would you actually have time during the race itself to think Jesus I'm, I'm going quite fast this is going to be a quick time um no, not really. Like, you can judge where you are. And I knew the German girl in the lane inside me was in lane five, and she had um, beaten me at World University, so I was out to get my uh, revenge there. Um, so I I just soaked it up. I executed my race, and it's just about holding form and attacking through the line. And just to cross that line then and to see the 23-10 was just unbelievable. And people didn't realise it was a record first, but I knew straight away that it was a record because we had been eyeing up... Um, that 23-17 mark um, as a goal for the season. So um, it was absolutely super to get the win and get the massive bonus points to go with it and a quick time, which would be equivalent to the points. Like you said earlier, that, that, that was an Irish record and that record had stood for 17 years and now you hold three kind of Irish records. How much satisfaction do you take, Phil, from, from breaking national records and, and holding them? Like, it's absolutely massive. And like, that's a very long-standing record of being 17 years and to run 23-10 and say if I dipped under the 23 I can rewrite the um, outdoor record indoors um, which is a, a rare thing you can do but um, yeah so hopefully over the next few years lowering that further 200 is a fun to race indoors and especially with as I said world indoors being cancelled it allowed us to um, have a bit more fun indoors like we weren't chasing a major championships anymore um, and to just enjoy these races and Olympic qualification was the main focus because now Phil you, you hold the kind of Irish indoor and outdoor 200 metre record and besides the obvious difference one being indoor one being outdoor what are the other big differences between the 200 metre indoor and the 200 metre outdoor so definitely with the banked track indoors you do get that like run off when you're coming off the first bin, but you do have to attack it into it in the second bin. So if you don't attack in hard enough, um, you will find yourself at the top of the the bin and um, like where you could struggle if you didn't attack into it enough. So it is different. It is. Um, I actually enjoy racing indoors compared to the outdoor 200, and 
especially you don't have to worry about wind conditions, you don't have to worry about heat. Like, it's just that you can just race with quality tracks in Ireland between um, Athlone and Dublin, and, like, you would travel far to get a track as quick. The, the lane draw so indoor is very important, is it? Say that again, sorry? The, the lane draw for indoor, is that very important? Absolutely. You definitely want lane five or six um, for the... Um, 200 or 400 you could deal with lane 4 if you had it but obviously with the indoor or with the inside lanes it is much tighter and it is much more harder to um, manage but definitely that run off um, in lane 5 or 6 and it will fly up into the next bend That indoor season is almost over for you now I think it's just the nationals at the end of the month are coming up how can you take the speed you have indoors and transfer that to the outdoor season? Yeah so it is a short enough season with no were major chance as I said but yeah Nationals is um, next weekend I'll be doubling up over 200 and 400 there so it will be a busy weekend with four races in the weekend but then transferring out we go straight back into it we have a race four weeks later um, with var- into varsities um, which are in Dublin and then we go straight into a warm weather training camp in Malta um, again so like it's just about transferring straight through we have like we finish indoors we go into another four week block um, and then we reset again for um, two weeks in the sun. Like you said, are you going to race to 400 at the National Indoors as well? Do you find it hard to kind of move up and down kind of from the 200 to the 400? Or are you probably so used to it at this stage? Yeah, it's good to um, change the focus. Like, and sometimes I find it hard because obviously when you're in the 400, you don't take off the same speed as you do with the 200. And I'm in my blocks and I'm like, am I running a 200 or a 400 now? Like just to have that second thing to uh, see how you're actually going out of the blocks. But no, it is good to vary it up. And one is a training session nearly for the other because the 400 covers the distance, whereas the 200 is the speed. So um, the last few weeks I have raced a 400 and a 200 on the same day. Um, So it was a good training session as well as racing at the same time to take on throughout the season. Another one of the big positives from the national record is that it really helps boost your ranking points to qualify for the Olympics and Tokyo is, is a big goal of yours for later in the summer. So running national records like you did, it really kind of set you up to kind of qualify for the Olympics. So you must be happy with that, Phil. Absolutely. And I think the the time on um, Wednesday with the bonus points added on will move me from 36th out of 56 to 29th. So that's an, a massive um, boost up. So uh, again, Nationals at the weekend um, has bonus points again. Um, so hopefully another quick time there to boost myself up or stay in the same, like around the 29th spot out of the top 56. So if I stay li- lying in that position, I will be selected come June. And like Shane McCormick told us recently, there's two ways to qualify. You can either hit the qualifying standard for the 200, which I think is 22.8, or stay inside the top 56, which we are comfortably inside now. So when do you kind of start to allow yourself to think about the Olympics later in the summer? So obviously the Olympics is the end goal, and I think the race is on the 3rd of August. So um, there's lots of goals between now and then, and so taking them along um, day by day. Um if I don't execute between now and then, Olympics isn't going to happen. So it's always in the back of your mind. But at the same time, I have the short term focuses like I have focusing on indoors where I'm not even looking at outdoors. And um, where Shane is doing the planning side of things and getting races set up for the outdoor season already um, and planning the right ones indoors for the right points. But um, yeah, as the summer goes along, um, it will start to click in. And you obviously want to chase that automatic qualifying spot at the 2280 as well as that's possible with the right conditions and the right race and then uh, take it on into the summer but we also have um, European Championships about two weeks after Olympics so that's another one uh, another major championship that we have and I've got the standard for that that 2280 that you talked about there the qualifying standard if you didn't get injured last year I remember talking to you and talking to Shane that you both felt that that 2280 was was within within reach for you. Would you be confident this year, off the back of a of a good winter's training and a good indoor season, that you'd really give a good go at the 2280, which again would be a national record? Absolutely, definitely give a good stab at it because, like as records go or like as progress goes and stuff like that, um, people run a lot quicker outdoors than they run indoors. So starting off with a 2310. So far this year in the indoor season um, has good signs for the outdoor season. So yeah, hopefully transfer that out and uh, get as close as possible to that 2280. If not blow it and uh, 
if it would be another national record again as well. Why do people run quicker outdoors, Phil? Say that again. Why do people run quicker outdoors? It's just, I suppose, because of the um, the bins. Some people can't manage the bins as much or then weather conditions as well. You have all the hotter conditions and you might have a nice tailwind behind you that will uh, push you on that little bit as well. But obviously, again, it's harder to um, get the, into the right race with the right conditions because the wind has to be within the circle, certain legal limit. So um, it's not you don't have that security as when you race indoors and you have your time and that's it without question, whereas you, um, you will have that to play for outdoors. I was reading an interview with you lately where you said you're not a big fan of being introduced as Ireland's fastest woman. And why, why is that? Why, why, is that the, why don't you like being called that, Phil? Or what's the reason for that? Yeah, absolutely not. Like, I'm always head down when anyone, um, anyone says it. And, like, to me, like, 11.28 and um, 23 or 22.99 are my PBs. Yes, they're national records at the same time, but I'm going out to compete. I have set the new records for everyone else to step up to, um, but they're like not going to be my records forever, so I have to step it up too. So I am the fastest person for now, but like I'm always set my expectations higher to um, get quicker again. And yeah, it just comes as a tag, but it doesn't really set in for me. I'm just going out there to compete and be the best that I can be and improve on my performances. And uh, I don't really dwell on the tag, but other people do. And it, like I would find that kind of like embarrassing at times, and I would be like head down. What do you think of the text of Bellanine Bullet, which I refer to a lot of yeah. in the Southern Star? Absolutely, we'll take that one over the others uh, any time. And you obviously feel too that you're going to get faster and faster. Like you're only 25, you're yet to hit your peak. So like your PBs are national records uh, at, at this stage. So you do feel like there is more to come. Absolutely. Like in there is always areas that we can improve on and like this year we were playing around with the 200 more than the 400 um, whereas we will race a lot of fours outdoors as well whereas the next year indoor 400 will be a big target again because um, they have world indoors are back on schedule and European indoors are as well so it's a very it's like it's never that we have both major championships in the same year it's just because world indoors were pushed out due to the coronavirus so mm-hmm. it is about improving it again improving those performances stepping it up again and uh, hopefully quicker times did that disrupt plans that the world indoors have been cancelled this year well not really for us we were always like playing it in the back of our minds would we go or not go because it was in china it obviously is very far away and disrupts a lot of training wise um and travel wise but and it was two weeks later than usual as well so we were always humming and hawing whether we would go or not, but um, it is back in China next year, um, which is good to have Europeans first, which are in Poland, and then China two weeks later. I have to ask too, Phil, and I've noticed it a lot. When you run, you wear pearl earrings. Are they a lucky charm, or what's the, the thinking behind that? It's just something I always noticed. Oh, they're a set that never come out. They're in the whole time, <laughs> and uh, they're they're the one pair that never come out, no. They're a- a- aerodynamically, they work so... Absolutely, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Phil, thank you so much for joining us. Best to look at the Nationals Super. coming up and best to look for the rest of the season. Brilliant. Thanks a million. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to all things sport in West Cork. Don't forget to pick up this Thursday Southern Star newspaper, including our award-winning sports section with everything a West Cork sports fan could want. In shops across West Cork and online from anywhere in the world via www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper. The Southern Star and the Star Sport Podcast, number one for sport in West Cork. The rise of West Cork rugby has been a regular theme on this show since we launched last year and that influence was once again on show at Musgrave Park on Friday evening as Ross Carberry man John Hodden had scored a try for Munster on his debut in a 68-3 win over the Southern, Southern Kings in the Pro 14. Munster head coach Johan van Gran was thrilled with Hodden's performance and rightly so. Kieran, he looks a real player. He does. Like, it's a dream debut for for John Hodnett and the fact it was on Valentine's Day too it left it open for puns and I'm gone puntastic in this week's Southern Star Sports section because as first dates go Jack he made a great first impression and the odds are he will get a second date he he, he said tongues wagging at this guy, this guy. <laughs> tongues and I suppose the Munster fans were swooning over his performance um, now incredible stuff by John Hodnett 
<laughs> I have to I have to apologise for all those puns straight off. But um, no, no, I like I enjoyed them. The, but for John, kind of he's a uh, he kind of shot the prominence last year with the Ireland under twenty. Himself and Finian Witchley were on the Ireland under twenty team that won the Grand Slam and the under twenty six nations. And for John to have such a powerful um, monster debut is it's just. It's a great indication of the talent that we're talking about. Who is who is John Hodden? Tell tell the listeners, tell me, who is John Hodden? We know he's a talented rugby player. He's from Ross Carberry. Mm. He just scored a try on his Munster debut. But who is the man? He's from Corrigan in Ross Carberry, and he won a uh, West Cork Sports Star Monthly Award last year um, for his performances with the Ireland Under Twenties. And he had this kind of useless stat for you, but he had the shortest distance to travel to collect a sports star award last year because from his home in Corraheen to the Celtic Ross and Ross Carver, he's only a couple of minutes walk so um, he didn't have far to go to pick up his award he's the son of Dan and Margot he's the youngest of four siblings he also played um, GA with Carby Rangers up until he was a minor I think even though one or two have said he played under 21 and junior but I'm, I'm trying to double check that so he was a good talented footballer as well but he also played rugby with Clannock Kilty Rugby Club since he was 7 or 8 years old and he was on the radar then, got into the, the Munster system. Um, he's now a first year with the Munster um, Academy. So he's he's definitely on the radar. He's definitely um, a player who's improving all the time. I think his seven appearances with the Munster A's under his belt. He's, that was his debut against the Southern Kings last week. And he made a fantastic break very early on that led to the first Munster try. Then he scored a try himself in the 40, 49th minute. Um, he won the Man of the Match award, so it was an absolute, absolute dream debut for John Hodnett. And it's worth noting too that Kekel's Fineen Witchley also started that game, and Fineen was replaced by Skibbereen man Gavin Coombs. So there was three West Cork players involved in the Munster team last week. And it was interesting, Johan van Grand's quotes afterwards when he was talking about John Hodnett's um, dream debut. He said, It just goes to show that we have got some real gems in this province. and John Hoddett is one of those gems um, and he's from West Cork and like you said earlier Jack and West Cork is producing rugby player after rugby player at the moment yeah, so maybe let's just focus on that um, theme for just a minute or two because I know you're planning to do a piece in the coming weeks on the influence of West Cork players on the rugby scene in Ireland and it probably dates back to when Darren Sweetenham mm-hmm. made his breakthrough obviously we had a piece in last week's paper or the week before profiling Darren Sweetenham so he essentially kicked off a revolution in many ways so could you maybe give us a, a sense of what you have in mind for when you ap- approach a piece like that where, where does the conveyor belt start and where has it gone through and where does it end it's, it's incredible the last couple of years from Darren Sweetenham like we mentioned Fadine Witcherly his younger brother Josh Witcherly there's Gavin Coombs there's Liam Coombs there's John Hodnett now, um, even in the women's game, we've Laura Sheehan from Beira, Inya Breen from Skibbereen, and that's just some of them. To mention too, uh, Jack Crowley of Bandon Rugby Club, um, a young man from Inna Shannon who was going great guns with the Ireland under-20s at the moment. We actually have a full page on Jack in this Thursday Southern Star. I talked to his former trainer at Bandon Rugby Club, Bob Brady, just about Jack Crowley because... Jack is an out half. He's 29 points in Ireland's two games so far. He was man of the match in the win against Scotland, the first day out, and scored two fantastic tries. So that conveyor belt is showing no signs whatsoever of slowing down. Um, I was on Game On at 2FM there before Christmas, plugging my book, Something in the Water, which is still on sale in all good bookshops. The story of Skibbereen rowing clubs' success and conquering the world. Yeah. Something to that effect? Something to that effect, yeah. Still available still in all good bookshops. And, and some rubbish ones too. And some poor ones, yeah. Kind of the ideal present. But I was chatting to Dunico Callahan and chatting to him after just about West Cork rugby and he was telling me that Munster rugby are blown away by the talent of rugby players in, in West Cork. Um, there's just something about West Cork for producing... I don't know is agricultural player is the wrong word to use but there's there's a toughness and a rawness and a yeah there's a strength to the players coming up if you look at at Finneen Witcherly and you look at Gavin Coombs and you look at Josh Witcherly even John Hodnett they're big strong men and they're achieving some great things with Munster so like Jack said in the next couple of weeks planning on a on a rugby special kind of unearthing why 
West Cork is such a hotbed for rugby talent at the moment. And probably one more that I, I'll add to the list in an almost higher profile way is, of course, Ty Furlong, whose people come from Willie Island. Another big, strong man. Obviously, he's born mm-hmm. and bred in Wexford himself, but his people come from Whitty, So And he's a regular down to Whitty. He yeah. is indeed. So there's yeah. another to add to the list of big, strong men and women coming from West Cork, playing their trade for Munster, Leinster, Ireland mm-hmm. and further afield. So it was great to see John Hodnett kind of take his chance for, for Munster. Um, he's targeting more minutes in, in, the, in the, I suppose, the weeks ahead because with the Six Nations, there is a chance there with the internationals away with the Ireland team. So there's a chance there for, for John Hodnett to, to follow up on his, on his dream debut. The chat, that's the challenge for him now. It was such a fantastic start to get men of the match in a try in your first game. And the challenge now is to follow that up. But he's on very solid footing. He plays with UCC in the AIL. He's come up through there. He's um, He looks the part and he's another exciting talent. Well, Kieran, it's not only top rugby players that West Cork has been producing in recent years. Smooth segue or what. We've also been producing sports stars across all codes. From rowing to road bowling, camogie, ladies football, boxing, kickboxing. And you went through... Just some of those talented young sports people from West Cork in last week's paper, the top 20, or just 20 sports stars under 20. And that piece has now been made available online, southernstar.ie. So we touched on it last week, but let's maybe just bring it back around because it's made available online. So those of you who haven't had a chance to read it or if you're living away and haven't had a chance to pick up last week's copy of the Southern Star, this piece is now available online. And I guess... While we're not just on the subject of talented young West Cork sports people, it's probably worth mentioning again, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I think when you look at this list, it'll make people from West Cork proud to be from, from West Cork because the conveyor belt of talent is incredibly strong at the moment. When you look at the current giants like Phil Healy, who, who we talked about earlier, you've Darren Sweetenham, you've Conor Horan, you've the O'Donovan brothers and those real top level sports stars. But it's fair to say that the next wave of talent coming through is... There's some sensational young sports people there. So last week we put together West Cork's 20 stars under 20 and some incredible talents there. Um, just for example, Kira O'Sullivan from Noosestown Camogie. We Kira in last year on the Star Sport podcast. She was one of five Carberry Camogie players that were on the Cork team that won the All-Ireland Minor A title. Um, Kira has been drafted up to the Cork Senior Camogie panel under Paddy, Paddy Murray. She's the youngest player in the Cork senior panel at the moment. She made her debut in the win against Waterford and Parky Cueve a couple of weeks ago. She's still a, she's a Leaving Cert student in Bandon, so she's a busy year ahead with, with school and so on. But just for for Kira to be called up to the Cork senior panel, I was actually chatting to Paddy Murray about her, and he said he's been on she's been on the radar for the last couple of years. So she's now in with the Cork senior team. She'll improve from that. She'll learn from that. She's also one of the reasons that the New South Town Camogie team is up at senior this year. She got 1-5 in the county intermediate final against Inneskeen last year. So she's a classy forward. She's a great talent. And it just goes to show, again, the talent that is in here in, in, in West Cork. Um, like Jack said, you fr- you have from from road bowlers to soccer players, even to kickboxers. There's a young, young man here, Luke Cronin from um, Dunmanway, who's with West Cork Kickboxing Club. And he's achieved great things in the sport. And he's another one to watch. Um, there's other kickboxers too, like Grania Begley and Eno Flynn, who didn't make th- this list, but would have been worthy also. Eno uh, Flynn, a man I've shared the ring with. Yeah? So yeah. you've seen his talent firsthand? I have. He left me with a busted and bloodied nose. So, And he was, uh, I think, 10 years my junior and probably 5 kgs lighter. Mm. And it felt like I was in against a man who'd been fighting for twice twice the time I had been and uh, so that just shows the level of talent coming out of the West Cork Kickboxing Club and that was in boxing that was about yeah and he's a sport he's not competing at regularly and uh, he left me with a, a boo-boo on my nose <laughs> a boo-boo on your nose uh, another top uh, top team is Laura O'Mahony of the O'Donovan Rasa in Skibbereen she's a Cork senior footballer um, and another incredible talent on the way up from West Cork. She started Cork's first three league games in Division One this year at wing back. It's a new role for Laura. She has played, I suppose, with the West Cork ladies in the half forward line. Um, uh, Cork or trainer at wing back. They feel that that could be her maybe position going forward. That she's she's so good coming forward with the ball. She's speed. She can link up play. Um, she's just 
a, a really, really good footballer. And I'm going to be very interested to see how Laura gets on this year because her target will be to try and win a place in the championship team um, for Cork this summer. So she started off really well. She's been very impressive and she caught the eye in Cork's recent win against Dublin in Croke Park. And there's so many more, Jack. Kind of Emer Minahan from Skull, a really talented rugby player who's um, making waves with the Munster rugby team. Lee Murray from Cora, a young soccer player um, who's with the Republic of Ireland under 15s and who Charlton Athletic have interest in. One of our old favourites is Darren McElhinney. And I can't believe he's just 19. Darren's been, he's been around for years and years. Another young man we had on the Star Sport podcast last year. He's on his first year in college up in UCD. Still only 19. Still with his best years ahead of him. And a big year from this year because he's out a junior. This is his first year as a senior athlete. So we'll watch with interest how, how Dara gets on. Dara Dempsey, a young road bowler from Skibbereen who's only 15 and is already a three-time All-Ireland champion and a defending All-Ireland under-16 champion. Fiona Keating from Corsi Rovers, who is our current West Cork Youth Sports Star of the Year, is just across all sports. She's a sensational um, young talent. She plays uh, camogie, she plays football, she plays basketball, and she excels in all of them. Finn O'Reilly is a young rower from Skibbereen Rowing Club who's following in the footsteps of Gary and Paul. He was only 13 when Gary and Paul won their Olympic silver back in 2016. And I don't think he was rowing back then. Yet fast forward four years later, he's 17 and he's trying to get to the World Junior Championships this year, I think. So that just, again, goes to show the variety and the wealth of talent that we have here in West Cork. Um, another couple of names, Charlie Lyons from Innes Shannon, the soccer player with Cove Ramblers, Fionn Herlihy from Dunmanway is the current um, Don, he's footballer of the year and he's only 19 and still with the Cork under under 20s. Sonny Gaffney is a young boxer from Bantry, Jack. He's only only 15, but again, like you've seen him boxing. He's yeah, only... I, saw him, I saw him in action in the Cork County Leagues up in Churchfield maybe two or three Thursdays ago and I was blown away by the level of talent this young man has. He was boxing like someone who'd been fighting at an elite level for 15 years, but he's only 15, as you said. He has been boxing at an elite level at an underage uh, level but the way he was boxing when he got on the inside he was letting punches go when they say punches in bunches <laughs> he was throwing 20 punches at a time and the, the guy he was in with was completely overwhelmed so Sonny he's a big tall lean youngster long arms a lot of power a lot of skill speed for days so yeah he's one to watch definitely and uh, I look forward to seeing how he progresses in the future Hannah Sexton is another one. She's a dual star with a difference from Tim League. She's an All-Ireland road bowling champion, but she's also a Cork minor camogie player. Then you have Jack Lawton. He's in with the Cork under 20s who won an All-Ireland minor final with with um, with, with Cork last year. Searcy McCarthy is another Cork senior camogie player from Ballon Spittle. So just from this to those alone, you can see the incredible talent that is there. So I'd recommend anyone to go online to www.southernstar forward slash sport and click on the link and just check out the amazing young talent that is in here in West Cork at the moment. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to all things sport in West Cork. Don't forget to pick up this Thursday Southern Star newspaper, including our award-winning sports section with everything a West Cork sports fan could want. In shops across West Cork and online from anywhere in the world via www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper. The Southern Star and the Star Sport Podcast, number one for sport in West Cork. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast and as always at this time of the week we're going to take a quick look at what's coming up in this week's Southern Star Sports section. So Kieran, take it away, sell the paper to the listeners. Even though Storm Dennis the Menace wrecked the, the local sports scene last weekend with the Carberry Under-21 Championships called off and the uh, West Cork League was the round was postponed. Still loads in this week's Southern Star Sports section. And it's actually one of my favourites of the year so far, Jack. Um, we touched there with a, a piece on Jack Crowley, the band and rugby player, making um, making great going, going great guns with the Ireland under-20s. Obviously, we've we chatted to Phil Healy after her record-breaking form. We've John Hodnett is in there. We also chat to Mark Buckley of Dunmanway, who was on the CIT team that won the Trench Cup. There was um, Misfortune for Orla Cronin, 
our star Komogi player from Inneskeen who lost her fourth Ashburn Cup final with UCC. So tough one to take. Great interview with David Lowney of Clannacilty who won the Fitzgibbon Cup with UCC last week. Well worth reading that. We've an interview with Saivo Leary, the young Kinsale footballer who is on the Cork Senior Ladies football team. Interview with Kate Wall of the Cork Intermediate Camogie team. Um, just so much there. Sacred Heart Secondary School from Clannacilty lost her All Ireland Junior A Camogie Schools final last Saturday. We have a full report and more on that. So there was loads in this week's Southern Star. So Thursday morning, get to the shops. Thursday afternoon, get to the shops. Thursday evening, get to the shop and pick up a copy of the paper. And if you can't make it to the shops, I'll repeat myself, as I do every week, just click online www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper and you can read the Southern Star from anywhere in the world from less than two euro per week. That's less than a, a little rose on Valentine's Day. I tell you, roses are very expensive around Valentine's Day, so... Much cheaper than a rose. Much cheaper than a rose. Um, again, thank you for listening to this week's Star Sport Podcast. We'll be back at the same time next week. So if you enjoy these... Pl- <laughs> You're getting close. You're getting oh. close. Come on. Thank you for listening to this week's Star Sport Podcast. We'll be back at the same time next week. So if you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, Acast or wherever else you listen to the show.